Hello everyone. Welcome to Mathematics, Physics, Mathematical Physics channel. Today, we're going to talk about another episode of the Math Puzzle series. In this episode, we're gonna solve an interesting Olympiad puzzle about sequences and series. So, let's do this. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell, so you won't miss future episodes. Keep in mind that the aim of this channel is to represent the beauty of mathematics and physics, and the pure connection between them. So, watch other videos on our channel, and support us with your comments and suggestions. Let's see what we must do. In this puzzle, we are given a sequence, called AN. The partial sum of the sequence is called SN, and it obeys the following relation. Given that the first term in the sequence is equal to 1996, we are asked to find the 1996th term in the sequence. This puzzle is the second problem from the first round of the British Mathematics Olympiad in 1996. Please give yourself a few minutes to solve this problem. After a short pause we're gonna solve it together. First of all, it's worth mentioning that a sequence is a function of the natural numbers to the real numbers. It means that its domain is the set of natural numbers or a subset of natural numbers, and its range is the set of real numbers or a subset of real numbers. So, the sequence function takes the discrete values of the natural numbers and maps them to real numbers or generates real values. In order to solve these kinds of problems, it's always a good idea to produce a few first terms by direct calculation. This gives us a nice intuitive sense to deal with the rest of the problem. We start from the first term in the partial sum. Obviously, S1 is equal to A1, so S1 is equal to 1996. We keep going to determine a few more terms. S2 is A1 plus A2, so it's equal to 1996 plus A2. On the other hand, from the given formula for the partial sum, we realize that S2 is equal to 2 squared multiplied by A2. So, by equating these two relations, we get 4A2 is equal to 1996 plus A2. Thus, we can calculate A2 by taking it from the right hand side to the left hand side. We now have 3A2 is equal to 1996, which gives A2 is equal to 1996 divided by 3. Very good. Let's do the same and calculate the third term. S3 is A1 plus A2 plus A3. Replacing A1 and A2 by their values, and S3 by 3 squared multiplied by A3, we get 9A3 equal to 1996 plus 1996 divided by 3 plus A3. The sum of these two terms by taking the common denominator of 3 would be 4 multiplied by 1996 divided by 3. We now subtract A3 from both sides to get, 8A3 is equal to 4 third of 1996. Then, we divide both sides by 8, and we obtain A3 which is equal to 1 6th of 1996. Well, by looking at A1, A2, and A3, you may already see the trend between the consecutive terms. But, let's do one more term. S4 is A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. We replace the left hand side with 4 squared multiplied by A4, and the right hand side with the values of A1, A2, and A3. Simplifying both sides as before gives, 16A4 is equal to 9 multiplied by 1996 divided by 6, plus A4. Then, we subtract A4 from both sides. Next, we divide both sides by 15. Ultimately, we get, A4 is equal to 1996 divided by 10. Perfect. We now have enough terms to recognize the trend in the change of the consecutive terms in the sequence. Let's write them a little nicer to ease our lives. Now, look at each fraction, the top of each fraction is the same number which is 1996, but, the denominator of each term is different. We see that the denominator of the second term is 2 plus the denominator of the first term. The denominator of the third term is 3 plus the denominator of the second term, and likewise, the denominator of the fourth term is 4 plus the denominator of the third term. We also realize that the additional portion to the denominator, is equal to the counter index of the new term. Let's call the counter index by i. If the index is 1, the denominator is 1 as well. Since, the denominator of the new term is equal to the sum of the index of the new term plus the denominator of the previous term, we can say that, 
If the index is 2, the denumerator is 1 plus 2. If the index is 3, the denumerator is 3 plus 3, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3. If the index is 4, the denumerator is 6 plus 4, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So, we conclude that the denumerator of the term number n is the sum of the natural numbers up to n. In math language, we can write this by a sigma sign. Now, we can easily predict that what the term number n is. This term is a fraction with 1996 as the numerator, and the sum of natural numbers up to n is the denumerator. By the way, the sum of natural numbers up to n is, and multiply by, n plus 1, divided by 2. Do you want to see why that is so? It's super easy to prove that. Just write the summation twice, but for the second time in the reversed order. Then sum term by term. On the left hand side, we get twice of the sigma. On the right hand side, the addition of each pair of corresponding terms yields n plus 1, which are repeated n times. So, the result of the right hand side is n multiplied by, n plus 1. Now, we divide both sides by 2, and the proof is done. Good. We have a n. We multiply the top and bottom of the fraction by 2 to get, 2 multiplied by 1996, divided by, n times n plus 1. For the term number 1996, we have to replace n with 1996. We cancel 1996 from the top and bottom. So, a1996 is, 2 over 1997. Fantastic! We've solved another puzzle together. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Keep in mind that the aim of this channel is to represent the beauty of mathematics and physics, and the pure connection between them. So, watch other videos on our channel, and support us with your comments and suggestions. See you next time.